Hi, my name is Dr. KK and I welcome you to the third episode of the Trinka podcast series brought to you by the makers of Trinka AI, the best grammar checker for academic text. In this episode, we'll discuss some smart ways in which you can research technical terminology. In other episodes of the series, we hope to share some tips on how to use the English language, especially from the point of view of English as second language speakers, updates on language technology and research discovery tools, explainer videos on NLP concepts, interviews with experts and we also hope to answer some questions and even cover topics that you would like to suggest you can write to us by email at podcast at trinka.ai or find us on multiple social media platforms like linkedin twitter facebook instagram and wechat and weibo for our chinese audience just search for trinka ai wherever you find us please like us and support us if you like this episode and the content that we share please again share it with your friends and colleagues and spread the word all right so let's get to the topic of the podcast itself it is 2022 we are two and a half years into the covid-19 pandemic and we are all clear about what rtpcr stands for right i'm not quite sure because i wasn't quite sure about what rt in the abbreviation rtpcr stood for and i would like to share my research sort of technical terminology research discovery process with you for this particular thing so that you can also employ this technique when you do your own research all right so this is what i'd like to talk about what does the abbreviation rtpcr stand for we have three options the first one is real time or quantitative pcr which is abbreviated as qpcr the second option is reverse transcription pcr and the third one is reverse transcription qpcr right now i'm assuming that everybody knows what pcr stands for which is polymerase chain reaction and we are not getting into the technical aspect of wha- what each technique or each expansion stands for instead we are just trying to find out what is the right expansion if you were to use a term rt pcr or the abbreviation rt pcr in your manuscript so how would you start your search process you can do google searches and go to let's say wikipedia but i would recommend that you search first on a scholarly or an academic search engine and the most popular one is google scholar so i did a google scholar search and this is what i found if you put in the query reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction that is the entire expansion followed by the abbreviation in parenthesis everything enclosed in quotation marks i was surprised to find that just the one research paper has used this entire search query in the body of the research paper itself i would have expected more so the corresponding uh, search for the real time polymerase chain reaction with the abbreviation and everything enclosed in uh, quotation marks gives you 30 approximately 32000 results now that's weird when i i would not have expected this so there seems to be a clear um, trend on people using RT PCR the abbreviation for the expansion real time PCR right now i was not sure if it is right because rt could also stand for reverse transcription so then you have to go to uh, some other databases so the the most popular at least for the biosciences and the medical domains would be pubmed or nlm so i went and looked up uh, three of the documents that i could find just to show you uh, how confusing it can be So in the first um, page that we have which is basically a definition and uh, information regarding uh, the uh, the term real time q rt pcr again you you can see that real time is there the quantitative bit is there rt is there so everything is incorporated into this uh, abbreviation itself and it says it expands to real time quantitative reverse transcription pcr okay so that's information point number 1 another page which is um, which is in the article application of reverse transcription pcr and real time pcr in nanotoxicity research published in methods molecular biology in 2012 so you already judging by the title you can you can assume that there are two terms and there is some difference between these so let's see what the abstract says so at the abstract starts with reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction in parenthesis rt pcr so it basically says that re- rt stands for reverse transcription is is a relatively simple and inexpensive technique so i'm not reading the rest of it now in the the, the next sentence seems to say that real time pcr again it is not rt allows for the detection of pcr amplification in the exponential growth phase of the reaction and is much more quantitative 
than traditional RT-PCR. So this phrase itself seems to suggest that the RT-PCR uh, abbreviation stands for reverse transcription and the Q or the quantitative or the real time bit is a sort of an adjective to that. Now let's take a look at the third phrase in uh, third document in question which is an explainer on the technique polymerase chain reaction itself and uh, here RT-PCR is expanded to reverse transcription PCR but as you can see if you search within NLM or PubMed there are multiple versions of the expansions and you are not quite sure which is the right one. In such cases you have to search further on I mean, I'm sure that this problem has been thought and you know researched and written about by somebody else and I did a Google search and I eventually found this article which is basically a beginner's guide to RT-PCR, qPCR and RT-qPCR written by Grace Adams from the University of Leicester, right? So these are the important phrases that I'd like to discuss here. So the article states that it is a common misconception that RT-PCR, qPCR and RT-qPCR are synonymous. That's what, you know, it is confusing. There are similarities and these similarities often result in the incorrect use of the acronym. Acronyms as in, in plural. And uh, so what does it say? In an attempt to prevent this, the minimum information for publication of quant uh, quantitative real-time PCR experiments guidelines, abbreviated as some MIQE guidelines, which were first published in 2009, proposed a standardization of these abbreviations. And it goes on to say that they stated that is the uh, guideline state that RT-PCR, the abbreviation, should only be used to describe reverse transcription PCR and not real-time PCR, as is often confused, right? So yeah, so that gives you a clearer uh, picture. RT in RT-PCR should stand for reverse transcription PCR. Now, I did not end my search here. I tried to look up these guidelines themselves, which is the actual source. You, whenever you are researching things, you try to go to the actual source itself, which is what I did. And I looked up these guidelines and I found this. So this is a, a paper, it, the MIQE guidelines published in Clinical Chemistry, the journal, volume 55, issue 4 and April 2009. And I just directly go to the the terminology section or the nomenclature section and it basically says this. So the guidelines written by a lot of experts, they propose that the abbreviation qPCR be used for quantitative real-time PCR and that RT-qPCR be used for reverse transcription qPCR. So I hope that gives you a lot more clarity and it also goes on to say that applying the abbreviation RT-PCR to qPCR causes confusion and is inconsistent with its used for conventional reverse transcription PCR. So what is the answer based on what we found? That RT-PCR should stand for reverse transcription PCR and you should not use RT-PCR for real-time PCR. Instead, you should use qPCR, which stands for quantitative PCR. So I'm going back to our original question this is the question and these are the options so the right options seem to be these qpcr should stand for real time pcr or quantitative pcr the which is the other way to say it rt pcr by in itself in itself should stand for reverse transcription pcr and if suppose you were to uh, use rt qpcr that should stand for reverse transcription qpcr all right i hope this was clear for you this is how you should research uh, technical terminology queries that you might have. Uh, the simple principle being you can search on any search engine, but you should try to search on the academic search engines where you can. You can look for frequency of occurrences of each of these terms to glean some, some information as to how the trends are. But for confirming these trends, you'll have to look for uh, these in databases, maybe definitions in our case, in PubMed, which, is, which was inconclusive. Then I went on to an article which is written about the confusion itself, which said X, Y, Z, but it also pointed uh, me to the guidelines proper, which I found and it was very clear. And then I arrived at the final answer. So this is uh, something that you can incorporate into your workflow when you're searching for uh, questions uh, on research or technical terminology and find the right answers. I hope uh, you learned something from it and it was useful for you. Once again, if you find this useful, Please share this podcast with your friends and support us on all the platforms that you might find us on. You can get in touch with us with your thoughts on this podcast 
this episode and the podcast in general by writing to us by email at podcast at drinka.ai. You can also get in touch with us on social media platforms like Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter and Instagram by searching for Tinka AI. Similarly, you can find us on WeChat and Weibo. All right. So that brings us to the end of the episode. I'll hope to see you in the next one. This is Dr. KK signing signing off for the Trinka podcast academic writing done right. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.